In this tutorial, we will be creating an eLab database on a computer running Windows Server 2003 and installing the eLab application on another computer running Windows Vista that will then connect to the database. Note that the eLab database and eLab application can be installed on all versions of Microsoft Windows since Windows 2000 SP4. These instructions can also be found in the eLab user manual. eLab databases are created using the eLab Database Administrator or eDBA. eDBA is a click once application and is distributed by logging on to the computer that will host the eLab database running Internet Explorer 5.01 or greater. Going to the download page of the eBiases website, clicking eDBA, entering your contact information, and accepting the end user license agreement. This will kick off the deployment by first checking your operating system for all prerequisites, downloading eDBA, and then running it. If your computer does not currently have the prerequisites for running eDBA, such as Microsoft Net 2.0, these will be automatically downloaded. Once eDBA has been installed on your computer, you will be asked to read and accept the End User License Agreement to continue. Click Next to skip the overview page. eDBA's main use is to install an eLab database. However, it can also be used to repair and uninstall eLab databases and to request a computer and time-specific key to access a database if you have forgotten your administrator password. These features are available by clicking on the Show Advanced Options button and will not be shown in this tutorial. Click Install a new eLab database or a new instance of SQL Server to continue. eLab databases are hosted by SQL Server. eDBA automatically creates and secures a new instance of SQL Server the first time you create an eLab database. Here you are asked to enter the name of the SQL Server instance. Leave the default name of eLab and click Next. This page asks for the details of the database. In most cases, you would just use the default settings. However, if you have already purchased a license key, you can enter it here. You can also specify the level of FDA 21 CFR Part 11 compliance and security settings on this page. The settings you choose will depend on your laboratory requirements. If you're not sure of your settings, leave the default settings as you can modify these settings later from within eLab. Click Next to continue. All users of eLab must specify their details and relevant affiliations. Their password must also meet the minimum password complexity. These requirements are also part of being FDA 21 CFR Part 11 compliant. As a database administrator is a user of the system, he or she must also specify these details here. Once this information has been entered, click Next to continue. This screen displays a summary of the information you have entered. Click Accept to continue. First SQL Server will be installed on the computer. This may take a few minutes. During installation, you may be prompted by some versions of Windows, for example, Windows Vista and Windows Server 2008, to authorize SQL Server to continue. SQL Server has been installed, and now the eLab database is being created. Once SQL Server has been installed, and the eLab database has been created, you may have to modify your firewall settings to allow other computers to access SQL Server. To do so, Follow the instructions presented in this window. It is a good idea to print these instructions for future reference. These instructions also include the database administrator's account's details, the SQL Server name, and the eLab database name. On this computer, we have Windows Firewall enabled, and therefore need to modify the Windows Firewall settings. First, copy the name of the SQL Server application into the clipboard. 
open the Windows Firewall by going to Start, Control Panel, and then Windows Firewall. Click on the Exceptions tab. Allow file and printer sharing. Allow the SQL Server Browser port, UDP 1434. And add the SQL Server application. Click on Browse and then paste the path we copied into the clipboard. Accept these changes and close the firewall. The eLab database has been created and is now accessible from other computers on the network. Next, you must install the eLab application for each user. Ask the user to log on to Windows on the computer from where they will use eLab. Once logged on, open an Internet Explorer and go to ebars.com. And open the Downloads page. Click on the eLab Download button. The eLab deployment will first check the computer for the appropriate prerequisites. In this case, the reporting software is missing. Allow the software to be installed. Once complete, the application will download and run. The first time you run eLab, you will be presented with this message that says you must enter the details of the eLab database we created earlier. These details were specified when creating the eLab database and were shown in the post installation message. If you use the default settings as we did, the name of the server is the name of the server followed by slash eLab and the database name is eLab. At this stage, the only user is the database administrator. Use his or her group name, username and password to log on to eLab for the first time to create other users. Again, if you have forgotten these details, they will be on the page you printed after eDBA has finished creating the database. Enter the password and click Log On. You have successfully logged on. The next step is to create accounts for each person that will use eLab for running the user, group or role wizards here. To exit the application, click on the Exit button. To open the eLab application for this user on this computer in future, go to the Start button, click on eBasis, and then eLab. This is the end of this tutorial.